Zephyr Teachout, thanks for joining us on New York Now. I'm thrilled to be on. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, I wanted to get your reaction to some of the latest developments in the Moreland Commission uh, controversy. Uh, U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara has issued a, a warning letter yes. to Governor Cuomo, possibly commissioners changing their stories. He's worried about that. Governor Cuomo now admits he did talk to the commissioners, but he said they were just trying to clear the air and, and uh, correct inaccuracies in the New York Times story. And now Governor Cuomo says he's not going to talk about this anymore because it's essentially because it's all under in federal investigation. What do you make of I that? I mean, this is pretty remarkable when your governor starts taking the fifth. Is uh, that how you would categorize it? Well, I, I mean, look, it? look he's, he's, he's taken so many different stances. It's a scalding New York Times. The initial story is scalding. And uh, we still don't know whether uh, Andrew Cuomo was directing Larry Schwartz. We, we still haven't heard any public good explanation. Like, why would, why would this serve the people of New York? But his responses have been really astonishing. You know, first he's silent for five days. Then he puts on a, basically a puppet show in Buffalo, uh, propping up another program. Uh, then he answers questions off camera, and now he comes forward. Where he relied on the commissioner's statements that were issued earlier that day that saying there wasn't any interference despite the New York Times article. Right, but, but that's not leadership. I mean, let's talk about the basics of leadership. The basics are to, when something like this breaks, come forward and explain what's going on, help the people of New York understand why it's good for them or what's ahead. And he hasn't ever provided that full explanation. So first, first he leans on commissioners. That's not leadership. But then today's response is really astonishing. It's saying, I am not going to talk to you, people of New York, about this major scandal uh, because I'm going to be protecting myself. I mean, a governor should know the difference between explanation and witness tampering. But if there's an ongoing federal investigation, aren't you really not supposed to talk about it? The, 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 the letter from Preet Bharara did not say, you may not continue your job as governor. What it said is you can't use the power of the governor's office to try to frame people's statements. And that's sort of a basic principle of law. When the story first broke, you said that you thought Cuomo should resign. Isn't that kind of premature, though? I mean, as we see, this is playing out. This is an ongoing federal so, probe. So to be very precise, I, I didn't say that. What I called for is that he should resign if he directed Larry Schw Schwartz. Mm, okay. So Schwartz, as we know, was uh, interfering with subpoenas of deputy AGs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a pretty serious mm -hmm. violation. It's certainly a moral violation. It may well be a legal violation. And, and I'd like to hear from Cuomo himself about whether or not he directed that. So you are running in the Democratic primary against uh, Governor Cuomo. Yes. It seems kind of a quixotic um, quest, though, because despite all of this bad news that the governor's had to deal with, he's way ahead in the polls. He's got $35 million. Um, and most people don't really know who you are. And among even Democrats, they don't. So how do you propose to pull this off? Well, we just had a recent upset in Virginia where uh, Bratt uh, upset Eric Cantor another politician who had really forgotten his base. And I think that's what's mm. really going on here, is that you have, you know, I supported Andrew Cuomo four years ago. I thought he was going to clean up Albany. And you have a governor who's forgotten where he comes from and has forgotten New York. And, uh, you know, I know I'm an underdog. But I'll tell you, the events the last week show how weak Governor Cuomo really is. So you said that you supported Cuomo in, in 2010. Did. And so what has changed for you? Uh, what what do you think? Well, I'll tell you why I supported him. I, I mean, I I sort of adored his father, and um, I remember his announcement speech. He was talking about cleaning up Albany. He mm -hmm. talked about pushing for a different way to fund elections to get at the root issues of corruption. And for me, that's a core issue. I've been organizing around that for years. It's a I've been an advocate for that on the state and federal level. Um, I'm sort of a dog on a bone about uh, money and politics, and I thought he was going to be too. He said he was going to veto incumbent protection redistricting. So then mm -hmm. immediately after he became governor, there were these series of disappointments. You know, it's first cutting the education budget and failing to veto redistricting mm -hmm. and then failing to do anything about corruption in Albany. Yes, so uh, the Cuomo campaign um, is taking you somewhat seriously yes. in that they're challenging your, your petitions. Um, and they're also challenging your residency because you need to have resided in New York for five years, yes. right, in order to run for governor. Yes. They say you've lived in Vermont for part of that time. Ha have you lived in, in Vermont? No, I've lived in uh, New York since uh, June 
early July 2009, well within the five-year period. And uh, I think what this shows, it, it, this, the suit really surprised me because, you know, I had a bunch of lawyers look at it and they all said, there really isn't a case here. And I think what it shows is that um, Andrew Cuomo is much weaker than he appears because it doesn't really make sense for a sitting incumbent governor to be attacking an underdog like me unless he's really worried about something. So the charges are that you lived in Vermont part right. of that time. So did you spend time in Vermont? You, you have family there, correct? Yeah, no, I have family there. I come from a big family. I've spent uh, three of the last uh, four summers there. Uh, I think many teachers spend summers elsewhere, and I, it's, just, it's really not, is, not an issue. I think what it's going to be is an opportunity, in a way, for me to uh, introduce myself to New York. Because as you said, I mean, let's... I, I know where I stand, and three weeks ago, most New Yorkers didn't know who I was. And we have these six weeks to really let people know that there's a traditional Democrat as an alternative to Cuomo. And I'm running on a very down-the-line traditional Democratic platform. And, you know, I see him basically as more of a trickle-down Republican. So are you running because you think you can win, or yes. are you running to ra raise these issues? I, I, I'm running to win. I mean, we're at, a, we're at a time after 2008 where there's this radical inequality, and we have a democratic state, and we have a governor who doesn't pursue a democratic agenda. He's, he takes money from schools to pay for tax breaks. He hasn't come out one way or the other on fracking, despite the enormous support for banning fracking. Mm -hmm. And um, you're, you're against I'm ag fracking. Yeah, I'm against fracking. And here we have a state that's the most open to immigrants of any state in the country, and he's silent on all these issues. But the, the key thing, it sounds a little technical, but it's really important. The, the key thing is he never fought for a Democratic Senate. And so as a traditional Democrat, I, I think we should have a Democratic governor. I think we should have somebody who's going to veto incumbent redistricting and fight for a Democratic Senate. And it wasn't until I got in the race that uh, Cuomo started making some concessions and started saying, well, yeah, I'll, I guess... I'll, I'll push for the Women's Equality Act. I guess I'll, I'll push harder for the DREAM Act. Because the Working Families Party, the progressive yeah. leaning party, um, for a while there said they were going to endorse you. Right. But ultimately, they, they endorsed uh, Governor Cuomo. Yeah. But, but here, I just want to say why I think I'm running and why yeah. I think I'm the yeah. right person mm -hmm. at this time. Because um, uh, a lot of people don't know who I am. I have been fighting against money and politics for a long time. And I've worked at presidential campaigns, congressional campaigns, Senate campaigns. I've led nonprofits. I led the Sunlight Foundation, or was the national director of the Sunlight Foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of experience in politics and policy. And right now, the biggest problem in New York is this old boy corrupt network where the, they circle the fences and protect their own. And this week is the best example of that. Because who's spoken up? There's, this, there's a scandal in New York State. And most Democratic and Republican leaders have been silent about it. That's why I need to be running. Yeah, in, in other states, say in New Jersey, there were several, um, you know, investigations started by the legislature exactly. over Governor Christie's bridge grade. But yeah, you're right. We haven't seen, we haven't seen anything like that. What, what, what do you make of that? That, that most of the political establishment has been, they've been very quiet about this. Well, I think I, you know, I, I study corruption and we got systemic corruption. We have a, a culture where people are going to protect each other instead of serve the people of New York. And that's what corruption means, basically. Forget the bribery. It's when you start serving yourself instead of your constituents. And one thing that I think is, is sort of worth pointing out is that New York has one of the most powerful governors of any of the states, actually arguably the most powerful. He has powers of appointment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, enormous budgetary power, enormous power over uh, localities, too. And that power, well, it tends to corrupt. It tends to uh, make other legislators dependent upon him. Because if, maybe if they speak out against him, they aren't going to get the, the deal in the budget that their constituents need. So you think the problems are endemic to the office of the governor and the way it, it's structured and not I in do. one person? So, I uh, do. So if you were governor, then how would you not succumb to that? Well, there's a few things. <laughs> one is I think we should ha imagine a very different role for the lieutenant governor which is actually in New York State, a constitutional office and, mm -hmm. you know, independently elected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in recent years, the lieutenant governor just does or says whatever the governor wants. But a powerful lieutenant governor can be a check, a little bit like a public advocate. Uh, my lieutenant governor running mate, Tim Wu, would be a powerful check on me. 
or a powerful check on Cuomo. And I think that's an appropriate role. Um, but I think we should also be really looking at the, at the budgetary powers and, and ways to uh, make sure that the, the, the governors in New York State don't get sort of full of their own power and start becoming puppet masters instead of uh, leading the state. So the September primary is what? Septem six, six weeks now Yeah, six away. weeks away. So really what it comes down to for you is identifying your voters, getting them to yes. the polls. Do you have the resources and the money to do that? Absolutely. We've already raised, I think, twice as much, much as Brat did in, uh, in Virginia. But the key is this is going to be a low turnout election, you know, whether it's 500,000 or 700,000. Mm. And so we are running a very, very traditional uh, grassroots campaign. And people are coming out of the woodwork. Um, after this, I'm going to go see 50 supporters in Albany. Uh, two days ago, there were 30 supporters in Poughkeepsie. And these are events organized by my supporters. So I'm not going to compete with Andrew Cuomo on $35 million in a war chest. And I don't want to, because he has dependencies that I'm glad I don't have. I don't have to serve Extel. I don't have to serve the pro-fracking interests. Um, but I do have extraordinary resources in the state. Well, it should be a busy few weeks for you. Thanks, yes. Thanks very much for joining us, Zephyr Teachout. Thank you. Thank you for having me.